In foreign affairs, Uganda abstained in the votes in the UN on the issue of Ukraine. You must have heard the arguments of the two sides. We have communicated our views confidentially to the two sides, the Western Bloc and Russia. At some stage, we shall give our views publicly. Our views are very correct, but we are giving them quietly. On the issue of security within the Great Lakes region, the regional conferences like the one we had in Nairobi some weeks ago on the issue of security within the region in, in the regional conferences like the one we had in Nairobi some weeks ago we share our history with the African brothers and sisters some of the problems never get solved on account of mixing up three issues armed conflicts for just causes, armed conflicts for reactionary aims, and the use of terrorist methods, whatever the nature of the conflict, just or unjust. The tendency, which is not correct, is to bunch all conflicting parties as negative forces. Uganda is a good laboratory for all manner of conflicts. We have, the just, we have the just wars, like the ones waged between 1971 and 1986 by the different uh, fighting groups against the regimes of uh, Amin, Obote II, and Okero. Why just? Why do we call them just wars? It is because the fight was about the freedom of vote by secret ballot for all adults above the age of 18 at regular intervals. The struggle against extrajudicial killings, the struggle against sectarianism that was enforced by arms, ETC. The last elections had been in April 1962, and we never, ha we never had any other elections until the 10th of December 1980, after 18 years. Even those elections were contested from the beginning of the process to the end. We tried to talk to the groups that thought they had the upper hand to no avail. And once still, they would kill anybody with a different opinion. Ben Kiwanuka, Bazirio Bataringaya, Alexander Latim, Oriema, Kasura, Sebuguao, Rutamaguzi, Nkanjiro, ETC, ETC, people are being killed. That is why between 1966 and 1986, Uganda was among the top four refugees generating countries in the world at that time. At one time, Uganda had 500,000 refugees almost the whole population of West Nile in exile in Congo and South Sudan. While I do not want to talk about other African countries, I am sure that I can safely cite at least two examples. The struggle by the SPLM of the Sudan against the Arab Islamic chauvinist regime of Khartoum, which was insisting that the very dark Dinkas, Shiruks, Nuer, ETC of South Sudan were Arabs and had to live under Sharia law. If you have got a sample of a South Sudanese and he stands up and you see him and you call him an Arab, you must be out of your mind. How do you resolve that madness? These were mad. You know, we would spend years talking to Bashir, but these people are not Arabs. Why do you call Sudan an Arab country? And you, why, why do you want to make Sudan uh, Islamic? These are not Muslims. They are not even, many of them are not even Christian. They, they, are, they are our traditional religion. Why do you bother them? But mad, madness 
is quite democratic in the world. How do you resolve that madness? How about the whites in South Africa who said that the indigenous Africans could not have voting rights in the country of their ancestry? You imagine we had to spend years with the whites in South Africa. The answer was a just war in each of the above situations. You then have unjust wars of either aggression or of a reactionary nature, non-progressive. Take the colonial wars of conquest. Why were the colonies conquering other countries? What right did they have to do so? Then you come to ADF, COIN, LACO, and ATC. ADF said that they wanted to make Uganda Islamic by force. COIN wanted to rule us by some commandments that were to be given him by the Holy Spirit. Lakwena wanted government megwa. In actuality, that means our government, by which she meant the actual tribal government over the whole of Uganda. These were aims all right, but they were wrong aims, oppressive aims, negative and progressive aims. They were therefore reactionary, Kupinga Mayendereo, aims, and hence the wars fought in their implementation were unjust wars, just like the wars of the colonial conquest. Having talked about just, just and unjust wars, we also clarify the issue of terrorism. It is wrong to say that every armed group is a terrorist group, whether they are fighting a just or an unjust war. Take Lakwana, for instance. Although she was fighting an unjust war of Acholi sectarianism, she was definitely not a terrorist because she was not using terrorist methods. Terrorist methods mean using violence indiscriminately such as attacking non-combatants, killing prisoners of war, or torturing them. Lakwena was confused, using the witchcraft of, of the smearing her fighters with the oil of moya tree, shea butter tree, and telling them that they were immune to bullets, but she was not a terrorist because she was not targeting non-combatants, she was not killing prisoners of war. That is how Major Jensi survived, one of our army officers. When BS was captured, Rakwena said, no, you bring him here. I, I, I will make him a member of the Holy Spirit movement, of the Rakwena movement. Uh, the, then BS was put there, and she, he was smeared with the Moya. Oil that, that he had not, then the man took the first chance to escape again. And, uh, so definitely Rakwena was not a terrorist. She was confused but not a terrorist. COIN and ADF were, on the other hand, fighting both an unjust war, but also a terrorist one. Why? It is because they were targeting non-combatants, killing prisoners of war, ETC, the Atiak massacre, the Baronyo massacre, the... Um, the Chitwamba burning of eight students in the dormitory, the Chibrara Seminary Massacre, the abduction, abductions of young people to force them to fight for them, the abduction of sex slaves. It is those acts that make a fighter a terrorist. Even if you are fighting for a just cause, if you target non-combatants, use forced recruitment other than conscription by the state, kill prisoners of war, take sex slaves, you become a terrorist. Therefore, in the whole of the Great Lakes area, the concerned groups should be audited as to whether they are fighting for a just cause or not, and as to whether they are using terrorist methods or not. What is then the correct method of resolving such armed conflicts? 
what is our experience and even other good experiences so that combining both political and military methods is the correct way, especially for the non-terrorist armed groups, even when they are fighting for an unjust cause, e.g. sectarianism.